2013, ADHS celebrates 30 years of Australian breeding bees, or ABVs. The first release back in 1983 consisted of production only traits, and with the last round of breeding bays, ADHRS released 40 breeding bays, including the indexes, the Australian Profit Ranking and the Australian Selection Index. ADHRS has been able to achieve this outcome as a result of significant collaboration with our stakeholders during this period. With the funding support of Dairy Australia and its predecessors, as well as the science-based research undertaken by the DPI and also the Dairy Future CRC, ADHRS has always been at the cunning edge of implementing science. Selection on ABVs is the best way um, to get genetic improvement in our industry and going into the future that is just going to be so critical so that our industry can compete for example with New Zealand, um, with the US and there's an even greater challenge that's looming in the future and that is just feeding the 9 billion people that are projected to be here by 2050 how are we going to achieve that? Genetic improvement is really one of the ways of getting there. And genomics, adding the genomics in to the ABVs is one of the ways of going even faster. I remember when I first left school, the ABVs were, were introduced and I remember some discussions about their implementation and uh, their, uh, the use in the, uh, in the dairy herds. Uh, for us, it's been interesting to see their development over time and I think that uh, today we obviously have a, a system that is, uh, is more appropriate for us as farmers. Breeding values were uh, very important uh, back then. Uh, it's just another tool, I guess, that we use with uh, herd recording and classification as, as an improving tool for our herd. We look at them fairly closely. Um, we concentrate on the top, uh, top end cows as they're the cows we want to um, breed from predominantly and uh, get bulls into AI. And we also look at the bottom end cows so that we don't breed from them and, and use them as recipes in ET programs if we need to. Well, we've been involved with ABVs all the time I've been involved with our herd um, and we use them to select the size we use, um, whether it be for type traits or for production. Well, to um, gauge the, uh, the the influx of overseas bloodlines and the influx of high milk flow bulls. The Australian system has helped to identify uh, the evolution of, of using high solids uh, bulls as well as uh, somatic cell count and good workability. Um, I'd sort of I'd like to say that you know if, if we didn't have ABVs on the sires, how would we be able to select a sire to use over a certain cow, um, whether it be your type traits or particular production? or um, workability traits you're wanting to improve. Without that information, you're really flying blind uh, when you're breeding your cows. Well, the access to overseas bulls from right around the world, the only way to assess the bulls for Australian conditions is the ABV system. I think there'll be a lot of things around genomics that um, we haven't even thought about yet. Um, even th things like feed conversion efficiency, um, it's on the horizon. Uh, things like that going further down the track. Um, breeding for particular traits, even more emphasis on protein um, and fertility. Um, if, without genomics, um, I don't think we will get to a lot of answers on, on infertility in, in our Australian dairy herd or even in the world, so it will have a big impact in those areas. Well, I guess in the time I've been involved, we've seen certainly the reliability of the information and the amount of information has increased dramatically. Um, and yes, as we go along, and certainly it's moving forward into genomics now, it's all um, more information that we're able to glean from what we want to use um, and it enables to make better breeding decisions. So how are we going to achieve this challenge of getting ever more um, genetic gain? One of the ways we can do this is to pull in new technologies into the calculation of ABVs and ABVGs now. One of the exciting new technologies that's really rapidly emerging is sequencing entire genomes. So the difference between what we do now and what we could do in the future is that at the moment we're just using a few, comparatively few, DNA markers along the genome to try and track the genes that are affecting the traits we're interested in, like fertility, um, production and so on. But with whole genome sequencing, you can actually read off the entire genome you can actually find the actual genes and the actual mutations that are really influencing our traits. And we've 
part of my research going into the future is really going to be about pulling that kind of information into the ABV and ABVG calculations. We'll see an increase in reliability and in turn that's going to lead to greater genetic gains in the future. Well, Australia is a country that um, has its own unique um, piece in the world, so we need a cow that is um, suited for the Australian farming conditions. Um, even though we've got a fairly wide uh, climatic variation, um, the cow we need in Australia is different to what other countries need, so it's important that we do have a ADHIS um, evaluating uh, genetics under Australian conditions for Australian farmers. ADHIS has been really pleased to provide information to help farmers make decisions about improving the profitability of their herds. We recognise that ultimately as end users, farmers are the ones that drive genetic gain in this country and by able to provide them with information about traits of interest, ADHS is aiming to help them breed the type of cows they want.